I strongly dislike phone calls. When my phone rings, I get in instant anxiety of checking the name or number that pops up. If it's a friend, are they okay? Do they just want to chat? Is this going to be a two-minute phone call or a two-hour phone call? Did we plan this? If it's family, are we planning the upcoming holiday? Have we checked in in a while? Am I being asked again what to do with the old basket of my things from high school? <laughs> if it's a random number, is this a person from St. John? Mm. Is this a wrong number? Do they need me? Is it a spam call? I strongly dislike phone calls and quite honestly do not usually answer them. But sometimes, sometimes I do answer. My friend Mackie called the other week and I felt too exhausted to answer, but I did anyway. We talked for over an hour and it somehow made me feel not as exhausted. In the middle of trying to make dinner last week, my other friend Christina called and it was actually her really cute three-year-old Grace who excitedly yelled, Hi, Katen! Where is Gray and Crooks? Our cats. <laughs> that phone call made my day. Last month, a random number called and I surprisingly answered it. They said, Hello, Angela, can you come pick up your beef tomorrow? To which I simply had to reply, uh, Sorry, I think you have the wrong number, <laughs> and got a nice giggle. My grandma called the other day like she does every week, and of course I answered. I'm not sure I ever answer a phone quicker than when grandma calls. Mm. I strongly dislike phone calls. When the phone rings, I get anxiety, but sometimes, sometimes I do answer. And when I do, I am typically never sorry that I did. Welcome to The Wonder.
Tonight, we are exploring calls. As you heard in the Welcome to the Wonder, as Caitlin talked about not enjoying getting phone calls, there are a lot of people who didn't enjoy getting calls in the Bible. And a lot of those people were called prophets. And like half of the Old Testament, or maybe even more, are little books that we call the prophets. It's all those books with a name at the top, like Isaiah or Jeremiah or Amos or Hosea. All of them were prophets. And what's really surprising about the prophets is they all share a pretty common story of how they were called. Right? Usually at the beginning of one of the prophets, the book will describe the setting, like what year or what place this is. And then the prophet will have a vision, so I guess that's a little bit like the phone ringing, uh, except for way worse, because like a vision the size of the Empire State Building shows up, which is very terrifying, I think. And then there's a commissioning from the vision that says, go and do something. And almost always, with the prophets, what comes next is an objection, is the prophet saying, no way. Not me. I couldn't possibly do this work. And then the vision will overcome the object, ob objection, and then there will be acceptance of the call from the prophet, and then finally the giving of the word that the prophet is to bring. I think that's a really interesting way of thinking about these prophets and about calling, is the fact that even in the Bible, getting a phone call or getting a call from God wasn't always enjoyable. For Isaiah, who we're going to be reading his call story tonight, it was equally as unenjoyable. Uh, last week, if you heard us talk about Jonah, you heard about the great Assyrian Empire, basically this really huge empire that was very violent, had an incredible military, and was very dangerous and, uh, and, and risky for the people of Israel to be located so close to Assyria. And as Assyria is growing and growing and growing in military might, the people of Israel are falling further and further and further from their worship of God. And Isaiah's job was to call the people to repent. So he had a really hard word for the people to hear. I think a lot of people sometimes get confused what a prophet really is in the Bible. I think we maybe think they're future tellers or something, but most closely they're protesters. They're people who speak truth to power, who say, you are doing the wrong thing, and it's time to turn around. So for Isaiah, for all the prophets, the call is always a surprise, one that they're not expecting. Let's hear the prophet Isaiah's call. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, 5 through 8. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to, him, flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. So I want to like, take a little time here and unpack this call story. I mean, you heard some of the things I was talking about. You heard the uh, objection, said, Woe to me, I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. Right? What did this all look like? like? What did these seraphim look like? What was that vision like for them? Was it terrifying? Was it terrifying for Isaiah? Was it something that, I don't know, maybe was a surprise to him that came out of nowhere? I don't know. I, I just think the more that we think about the actual like, way that Isaiah... This is awkward. Getting a phone call. Hello? Oh, no, I'm, I'm in Worship Lab. Yeah, we're actually like live on Facebook right now. So, no, I, <laughs> I cannot pick up a gallon of milk right now. Uh, so I guess I'll have to get it after <laughs> Worship Lab is over. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah. So I gotta go. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah. That was pretty weird. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know, like, Isaiah is, um, I don't know, I just think, like, Isaiah is surprised by the greatness of this vision and all the ways that, like, God showed up in that moment. It was just a surprising way that he probably wasn't expecting. I don't know. Yeah, and, like, what about, like, the angels that, that showed up, like, with their six wings? Can you imagine seeing, like, a creature or an angel with, like, six wings? Like, what do they use all the wings for? <laughs> typically, birds, they, they, they need two, and, and some of them can't even fly with two. Oh, so, man. like, if you have, like, six wings... Six wings is a lot of wings. That's, that's, that'd be crazy. Um, like, how big do you have to be to have six wings? I think you have to be pretty big. Um, can you imagine if it was, like... Oh. <laughs> no way. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Hold on. Um, no way. Hello? Yeah. No, no, I'm in, I'm in worship lab right now. I can't, no. Oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Um, so, what, you need a ride? No, I can't give you, I'm, I'm busy right now. I can't give you a ride. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, you're going to have to miss your shift, but I'm busy. Ew. Okay. Well, I, I hope you can find a ride. All right. No, it's okay. Okay, bye. Um... <coughs> Well, uh, sorry for judging you on your phone call since... Uh, yeah, it seems to be a theme tonight. Uh, well, I don't know. You know, what I, what I want to know, though, in this story is, like, why the hot coal particularly? You know, so, like, he says, Woe to me, I'm a man of unclean lips. And then this huge beast with the six wings comes with a hot coal put on his lips like would that not make the lips even more unclean yeah because they I would mean. be like burnt and scalded and oozing <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> dirty lips i think yeah that would that would stink absolutely not there's no way we're getting a third <laughs> phone call during this worship lab the same person no, it's my sister. Hello? Yeah, no, I'm like in church right now. I'm doing worship lab. Yeah, the, the thing we do on Facebook. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll help you finish. I'll, I'll help you look at your paper tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look it over. I'm, uh, but I can't do it right now. I'm in worship lab. So I gotta go. Yeah. Right, bye. Man, this is crazy. This has never happened before. Like we need No, to we never get phone calls in <laughs> Worship Lab. Also, we never forget to mute our phones in Worship Lab. So it's really wild. We got three calls. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess we can go back to the story. Yeah, with back it. Like, to the story. Isaiah was in the temple, yeah. and he was worshiping, and mm -hmm. then he got interrupted by these angels with right. six wings. Yeah. Um, I, like, God wanted Isaiah to go do something, right? He wanted, God, he wanted Isaiah to go and, like, help the people change because this Assyrian Empire was, like, so big. Like, so God wanted to do something for the people, right? Yeah. Interrupt it and do something for the people. I think that's pretty close to the story, right? For sure. Uh, like, God wanted Isaiah to do something and to tell people... <laughs> Like not not to follow the Assyrians, yeah. and he was interrupted by God, yeah. Um, and because God wanted him to do something for God. Okay, yeah. you are both ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wonder about this story and how you both have been getting phone calls that maybe that is what this story is about? No way. <laughs> 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 Maybe when someone needs a gallon of milk from your very own mm. house, or oh. when a friend needs a ride to their job so they can make money and have a sustainable life, mm. or maybe when your sister even needs help with homework, maybe that is also mm. an important call. Hmm. So you're saying, like, God doesn't just show up in, like, visions, like, with wings? Fully. God shows up in our neighbors and our families and in our sisters who need help with their <laughs> Blew it. <laughs> <laughs> God doesn't always call us to be prophets like Isaiah. Sometimes we blow these small calls like my buddies over here. 
But these are the calls that we mostly see in our lives, not these huge extravagant things. Mm. Sometimes we think our calls are even a big job or Mm -hmm. a big year in our lives. But Mm. as you've heard these phone calls, a lot of our calls are these little things on how we can help make life easier for one another. And the most important part in all of that is being able to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, like, I just want to reiterate that point because I think it's really important because I hear it from kids, like youth, like youth group kids, high school kids, but I also hear it from adults all the time. There's always this sense, like, what are we supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Like, this huge plan. Like, what's the plan for my whole life? But I think, I think like, really in our, in our lives are filled with these small moments where it is pretty obvious, like, what God is calling us to do in each moment. Mm-hmm. And like you said, where we should, as people of faith, we should always be ready to say, here I am, Lord. Mm-hmm. So let's sing it. In case you didn't know, none of those people actually called us, so we aren't just really bad <laughs> friends and family members. But Carter did get a lot I, of text messages from his family yes, during that. Yes, I am getting text messages <laughs> from my family. <laughs> Do you need to respond? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Be sure. We <laughs> might but later. <laughs> Family group messages. From what I've you. seen, it's it's not a pressing <laughs> issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's sing. Here I am, Lord. <laughs>
going to continue our conversations with one another, reflecting, unfortunately, on these small calls that we may have missed in our own lives. And this is especially important to reflect on because if you can recall that you missed a small call, then you also realize that you could have said yes. So we'll be sharing some of those moments from our own lives. <laughs> I can go because mine just happened this week. Um, I was on a Zoom, as you do all the time now, mm -hmm. and one Zoom box said something sexist to another Zoom box, and because it's the Midwest, everybody just sort of like froze up and could like tell the one that received the comment like was pretty uncomfortable and I mean I, I, I know the right thing to do is to call things out I mean I know that I know that it, the right thing to do is to call things out because you can't have reconciliation and justice unless everybody knows what happened um, I sort of made a joke and then I sort of halfways called it out um, but thinking back I think it would be, it's a real gift when when people stand up for each other it's not just, I think it's really easy to picture doing that like on a playground when there's like two kids and one's a bully, like you're going to stand up for the kid. It's a lot, I think it's harder to do as an adult because we let adults get away with so much. So I definitely felt like a, there was a small calling in that moment to really stand up for what I believe and what I think is right. One of mine happens almost daily because I am late for work most days. Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> Only by like seven minutes. That's typically the number. But um, so I al always, every day, feel like anxious and embarrassed that I'm late again instead of just like waking up 10 minutes earlier. I just feel those feelings. So I open the front door of the church, well, the alley door of the church, and I run up the stairs two at a time, always, always two at a time. And then I just kind of like tuck my head and speed walk all the way to my back office and I know that as I'm walking um, each person is in their office and, <laughs> and the nice like <laughs> co-worker thing to do is say hey good morning hey Joe hey Angie hey Beth but I just like go <laughs> and I think that's a call that I miss because it would be so much better for the work environment. It's especially awkward when, because Beth at the very front is so hospitable and is so kind when everyone walks in, and I'm still like getting used to how nice she is. Because I try to just like steamroll by her, and she's like, "Hi, Caitlin, how are you?" So I often have to like <laughs> dig my heels and like stop and say, "Hi, I'm great. How are you?" Because guess what? She is wonderful enough to not care that I'm late. Mm. And it makes the work environment better when I don't miss that call to simply just say good morning to my coworkers. I'm going to say good morning to you tomorrow. Uh-huh. At 9.07. If you <laughs> are even there before me. You know, the thing is, is like usually it's a blur past yeah. my door, so I'd have to shout it like behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I get small little guilt trips throughout the year. Um, I will uh, open Facebook or I'll open like my calendar app or any way I get notifications. Mm -hmm. And I'll notice that one of my friends or one of my family members, typically friends, I, I know my family, but their birthdays were like yesterday <laughs> or their birthdays were two days ago. And I had mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. acknowledged the fact that, hey, I know who you are and this is when you were born and I believe that it would be good as a good person to say happy birthday. Small little gestures, I mean, but to, like I think about my birthday, like when the day comes, it's nice to have those um, reassurances from my friends and mm -hmm. family saying happy birthday, hope your day goes well. It's, uh, it's, it's fun to have that. And I feel like I miss the ball a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like every single one of my friends, like their birthday will pass and I'll be like, oh, mm -hmm. I did it again. Um, I'm not a big fan of the putting it in your calendar and letting it notify you. I don't know, I'm, just, I'm lazy in that aspect. <laughs> but um, it does happen, and I feel that I could be a better person, and I could, I could really answer those calls to um, make those small gestures to make my friends and family feel better. Hmm. Off of that one, I guess is one that maybe a lot of people can relate to. 
that I know I have issues with. Joe said something a couple weeks ago. He said, uh, your family typically sees the worst of you. And that really resonated with me because oftentimes in my own life, if it's been a stressful week or if I know I'm going to be in the office for crazy long hours on a Wednesday, I'll come home at lunch and I'm just like crabby at Carter. <laughs> Which is like not fair to you. You didn't do anything. Mm. So that's <laughs> that's a call that I think we can all respond mm. to better is treating our family in a way that they should be treated and in a way that shows them that we love them because mm -hmm. that's a daily call. That's a call in our marriages in a call of being a parent is to treat those people with love so that way they can learn that and do the same with other people they meet. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm listening to all of yours and like, you know, it's never, none of these are too late, I don't think. You know, even today after my Zoom failure, I texted the person and I, you know, I didn't, I couldn't take back that I didn't do something, but I at least was there for her to like process. Mm -hmm. And like you with the birthdays, I actually found the best card ever because I'm the same as you. <laughs> and the card says, because of who I am as a person, I missed your birthday. <laughs> happy belated birthday or something yeah. that's just like perfect be you know i think there are ways that we can i don't think the calls miss us forever is mm -hmm. what i'm mm -hmm. trying to say mm -hmm. yeah. always have the opportunity to say here i am for sure so let's confess our sins and hear some words of promise from our god because i think a lot of what we're doing right now is confessing mm -hmm. yep we missed god's calling to us in all these little calls Following God is not about waiting for that one big moment with giant angels with wings. It's not about finding the perfect job that fits our passions for our whole careers. That's a lot of pressure. I mean, following God is not about living the perfect place or in the perfect way or in the perfect marriage. We're called to follow God in the little ways that we live each day. So let us confess our brokenness in the ways that we miss all of these little calls. Let us pray. God of the big moments and the little moments, we expect you to show up in some elaborate vision with a booming voice and bright light. Forgive us for expecting you to make a scene just to tell us something. Help me listen to your call in the small, everyday moments at home. Forgive me for talking over a family member, for being impatient because I am anxious, for letting my anger get the best of me. Help me listen to your call in ordinary moments out in our neighborhood. Forgive me for leaving garbage that I see on the sidewalk or avoiding eye contact with someone who might feel invisible in the world. Or forgetting that you call each of us to make this community better every day. Help me listen to your call in the small moments of my work. As I am surrounded by my youth and others in both churches I serve, let me hear your call to let each person know how much he or she matters and to encourage others around me. Forgive me for seeing my job as only a job and not a way to care for my neighbor. Thank you, God, for putting away the hot coals and giving us Jesus instead. Amen. Mm -hmm. We miss so many of your little calls to follow him in our homes, our work, and our communities. Yet you do not give up on calling us again and again. Each day we begin anew. Each day you call us forgiven. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together a semi-familiar song, Take My Life and Let It Be, with a few twists. Take my moments and my days Let 
and let me sing always only for me take my lips and let them be fill with messages for you take my silver and my gold and out of my grave I will go take my intellect and use This time, if you got bread and wine at home, I invite you to grab that. It's interesting, I think back like on when I was young and I was always asking God for these big signs. I said, send me a sign, send me a sign, send me a sign. And it never really dawned on me that like every single Sunday that I went to church, <laughs> God was giving me all these signs. And one of the most important signs is in this meal. This meal that says that like no matter where you are, no matter how many of your little callings or big callings you feel like you missed, that Jesus still plans to meet you on your journey and bring you to him and to his calling of mercy and love in the world. So on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. If you've got multiple people communing tonight, I invite you to distribute these elements to one another. If you are communing alone this evening, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep and strengthen you in God's grace and peace now and forever. Amen. Sending him tonight is one more calling him. You have come down to the lake shore. We'll sing verses one, two, and four.
Jesus, encarecer.